Hello, everyone. Welcome to December 18th, 2023's Feel Tuning Container, um, where we'll be forecasting the energies of this week. So from Monday to Monday, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. And thank you to everybody who's here live. You know, the live crew gets it like no one else does. Shameless plug. You might want to pull up. But if this recording suffices for you, it suffices for me. You like it. I love it. <laughs> so um, I kind of just want to get started um, and pull some cards for this upcoming week. Um, did I have some housekeeping stuff that I was going to say? No. I think I, I just wanted to, yeah, I think I just wanted to invite people who are listening to this on the podcast or on my sub stack to join the Discord, baby, because the live readings are lit, but also it's where you can see the cards that I pull. And I know seeing the cards is like really important for people who are like visual learners or visual experiencers. And so I just wanted to kind of put that if uh put that out there before we started to get into today's message um feeling kind of bubbly today but i'm also drinking an iced coffee which i shared with folks who are here live earlier um i also was sharing a little bit before we started this recording on the fact that the solstice is coming up soon so i wouldn't be surprised if any of us are kind of feeling into that portal um, that change of seasons in advance. And I also wouldn't be surprised if this reading mirrors the changing of seasons a little bit. So let's get into it. Y'all ready? I'll take that as a yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for responding, Lexi. Thanks, Anna. Let's do it. All right, spirit. Talk to us about this upcoming week. What are some tropes, some themes, and some breadcrumbs that we can tune into that would guide us for our most cosmic timeline for the upcoming week? Talk to us nice. Talk to us real. Um. Oh, I want to ask y'all. I wanted to pull like three cards, but I guess now that's changing. You guys have a number of cards. You like on your heart that feel aligned for me to pull. I'm just gonna shuffle until I feel ready to. All right, Base Monster Tiff in the chat says three is good to start. I agree. One already popped out. So I'm going to just put that down. If you already saw it, then let's rock. Um, another card spirit. Guiding energies, ropes, and themes. <laughs> also, those in the live container can see my facial reaction <laughs> to the cards I pull and the ones that fall out. So two extra cards fell out. I'm going to take them. So we have four cards. Um, let's just start with looking at the cards. So the first card that we have that represents a guiding principle is the Ten of Swords. And I won't describe this card just for the sake of like a clean audio, but I am showing it to those who are in the live container. So we have the Ten of Swords, the Leap of Faith card. Is what I call it. Yeah. Honestly, it's the live in faith card. Is what I would call it. The next card is. The tower. Sudden changes. A pivot to plans is what I hear. Being ready. So you don't have to get ready after the fact. Which like sounds like. <laughs> Anna says in the chat, I just ha ha very loudly. <laughs> yeah, I made a face when I saw this card too. But yeah, I'm already kind of getting a, a vibe for the week. 
Um, then the next card that came out was the Daughter of Wands, which I believe, if somebody can let me know in the chat, that would be cool. Which Rider Waite tarot card corresponds to this one? The Daughter of Wands. So it's card number three. And just to review, is the Ten of Swords, the Tower, the Daughter of Wands, and then we have the Nine of Swords. Oh, thank you, Anna. Anna's about to look it up. I appreciate that. So this is interesting. Because I'm getting a couple of, like, I don't want to say conflicting messages, but messages that are coming from, like, a couple of different directions that feel like they're aligned with, like, a larger message. So what I'll do is I'll read a brief description of each card just so people who aren't used to this deck can have a framework. Um, and then I'm going to build off of that framework because that's just how I am. So we'll start with the, um, the Ten of Swords. Okay, okay, let's see this Miss Ten of Swords. How you doing? So the swords in this particular deck represent air, east, mental realms, realities that the mind creates. And the Ten of Swords represents mental trips carried to the extreme, so there's nothing left to do but jump into the water, let go, and move from the head, which represents air, to the heart, which represents water. This card also represents extremism. Thank you, Anna. This card also represents extremism. So there's something, I'm just going to like boop, put that into the container. There's something about like mental extreme. And I feel like this is a theme in almost all of my readings, y'all. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. But this like spirit nudge to move from the head to the heart. So today we'll take a deeper look at it. But I'm going to put it to the side and get into this tower card. Let's see what the tower card talks about. And of course, I have my own interpretations of this of these cards, but I really treat each divination like a fresh kind of spread or try to as best I can. So I'm just going to review these cards in this particular context. And I appreciate y'all for waiting. Okay, so the tower here, the tower, the lightning bolt of illumination strikes hard throwing everything into chaos and confusion. This allows for restructuring based on truth and releases the personality from false consciousness, 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 wow, false consciousness and depression. The tower, like the Hindu goddess Kali, signifies a liberation that hurts even as it frees. So I'm getting the sense, I'm going to pause right here. I'm going to get sense, and y'all can raise your hand if this is you. But um, thank you for saying, Ahmed says, this complements the description of the earlier card really well. I agree. Um, Ahmed, if you feel like unmuting, I'd love to hear your synthesis so far. Because it, be, it might be actually similar to what I'm picking up on. If you feel like unmuting. Yeah, so it's basically um, your early card is basically about how we're just pushed to an extreme, right? So then we're eventually just have to just give it up or have that extremism take us, right? Or actually, maybe not. It could be the opposite. But um, so yeah, I just see that complementing what you're talking about with this card right here. That's it. Wait, am I muted? Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I was going to say, there seems to be this, like, complimentary, like, relationship. And I feel like that might be what you're seeing, like, in advance, you know? Um, and it, it does feel like both of them represent these extremes. Um, and I wonder, I don't know, I'm also open to anything anyone else is getting from it. Because I agree, Ahmed, I actually do think it's representative of of this like mental extreme and like almost like a blueprint like spirit is like flashing in front of us like this is what happens 
when things are taken to the extreme or held onto in extreme ways. And so it's like, I do, I actually do feel like these two cards are representing like, like, yeah, like a blueprint or like a breadcrumb, like we talked about earlier, where spirits like, I mean, if you keep and if you want to, things might end up in this way, but it also feels like, um, a little bit prefunctory, like it's showing up to kind of help us navigate around the possibility of chaos and confusion, um, destabilizing us. It doesn't mean that we're not going to experience it. It just kind of feels like, it feels like spirits like warning us in advance so that we can get ahead of something. It's kind of like, you know, if, if, you know, like if you don't believe the change is coming, you know, here's the reassurance of the second card, you know? Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I know. Cause it's like, okay, if you really didn't think that it was time to leap, now's the time to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for saying that. Let's see. I think Anna wrote something in the chat. Anna says, I will not lie. I've been nudged to work with Kali a couple times the past few days, but I've been researching the Morrigan too, to see if that's more appropriate for me. Ooh. Ooh. And I like, I like the the dichotomy of those two goddesses because it's like they could almost represent the same thing which they probably do like principality wise like on a base level um <laughs> but i want to pause actually yes cuz ahmed asks what is the more what's the more again and um yeah tiff says i love when the um deck offers a double down me too um, I also wanted to say if, if Anna, if you want to explain more about the Morrigan as well, you can feel free to unmute if there's more to share. That is, thank you for the invitation. Um, I'm, I'm no expert, I'm really not, <laughs> <laughs> but as far as I can tell, Morgan is a Celtic goddess and she's associated with death and destruction and war and also love um, and protection. Um, but I, yeah, I don't, I don't know much, but to me, it seems like maybe she has a similar energy to Kali. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of excited to do a bit more of my own research. For sure. Yeah, man. I feel like they're very similar. Like, they represent probably the same, like, spiritual wisdom, but from, like, two different cultural lenses. Um, so, yeah. I would love to hear about how your work with her goes. I also was, like, feeling into the fact that, um, what is it that you said? Something stuck with me. I can't remember it now, but it'll come back to me. But thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like the goddess of destruction is like in the air. I do actually now no, because I was like, let me pull a clarifier, but we got to get through the other two cards too. Um, but yes, I also do get the sense that I want to like kind of further delineate on these two cards because it feels like I'm getting like different scenarios like flashed into my mind's eye right now so i'm like okay how do i like approach these different scenarios or maybe i should just kind of like talk about them as i'm like seeing them and to me it feels like the goddess of destruction is coming for our head <laughs> in the sense that like you might not be like hey adam you might not be um the person or like the your physical body might not be subject to like again chaos and confusion but it does seem like there's this resounding message about mental walls and mental um barriers and how like you should let them fall if you want if you want <laughs> funny because yesterday in adam's container i was joking about the guillotine and i'm like actually yeah like yes and um Ad uh, ahmed says isn't kali always seen holding 
a bunch of heads too. Mm -hmm. Heads will roll. Heads will roll. And I feel like it's again like this. This these two cards. I I just keep being brought to like this area of the head, especially like not the front of the head, but right here. <laughs> If you guys are seeing in the video, like the center of the head. And it's like, it's also, I'm like, my attention is being brought to like the crown chakra. And the idea that like releasing old thoughts doesn't mean that your brain won't have synaptic interaction, meaning like it's not like you won't not ever think a thought again. And I feel like that wants to be said. Um, I think this also speaks to like an I'm more like kind of like if I put a microscope on it, I'm like, I feel like some of this is speaking to um releasing old thought forms and also like the precipice of a thought form. Um and how it's it's like, okay, you have this like violent card, the tower and the ten of swords that's like just leap, take action. But it's almost like spirit is also helping me zoom in and um speak to Speak to how gentle and possibly joyful. It's funny because the back of my zeal chakra was just itching. How like joyful releasing outdated thoughts might be. And how like I even want to say like pleasurable. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to read the chat. I'd love to know how that lands for y'all. Lexi says, I've been doing a lot of exorcism there for myself the past couple weeks. Ooh! Ooh! I don't know why I knew, Lexi, that you were like already on this. So Lexi says, implant removal, I feel. Lexi, do you want to uh, contextualize implants for people who might not know what they are? And also, I'd be curious, what is evoked for y'all when I say implants? And then I promise we'll get into these other two cards. I'll just make a guess, take a stab at it. It sounds like a thought form that's, you know, not of emanating from you. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Snap, snap. Agreed. In other words, <laughs> Tiff says, period. Period. That's literally like what it is. Especially with the word implants being there, I'm like, I think it's very um, evocative in, in the sense that you could probably imagine what it means. Adam says, energy siphoning. Mm -hmm. Thought forms that like siphon your energy. Yep. Definitely. And I'm just holding space because Lexi's typing as well. I'm also getting some stuff about human thinking and human being and like that dichotomy just like flashed in my head. So I'm going to put that to the side. Tiff says that um, implants may be something artificial and foreign to the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd say, yeah, especially the bit about it being foreign, you know, like something that's not supposed to be there. Hang on one second, guys. Hi. Anyways. Um, so Lexi says, um, well, yeah, I agree, Tiff. Um, I'm going to read what Lexi says. I feel like for me, the implants made me loop in thought forms. I'm not sure exactly what 
what was removed recently, but I know earlier in the year it was mental black cubes, which I feel are ancestral. I also have also have had stuff removed from my throat and crowned like a pipe and an egg, respectively, if I remember correctly. Wow. Wow. And these are like etheric, right? Or like astral, maybe? Or both? That's big. Yeah, and I remember us talking a lot about mental ba uh, black cubes um, early in the year, too. Interesting. Lexi says, maybe etheric, although I'm not sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I just kind of was asking to, to um, I guess, clarify for myself as well. <laughs> um, Tiff says, <laughs> Tiff says, sometimes I imagine pulling astral boogers out of my brain. They're usually thought forms imposed on me from childhood. Oof. Can relate. I love that you call them astral boogers. Like digging in there for gold. <laughs> yeah. And I do feel like there's something about the nature of thought forms that does want to be spoken upon. So I will do my best. Um, I do think for me, I, I kind of speculate often when it comes to thought forms about like how deeply they can impact the trajectory of like one's livelihood. And of course, there are like other things that come up for me when it comes to like health, um, people's ability to feel like they can move effortlessly, like whether or not thought forms impose upon that possibility. And I think for me, like that's generally like the filtration system that I use. Like, is this a thought form that is like generative and moving me forward? And it, can I also see myself outside that thought form? Or is this thought form something I'm identifying with and have now taken on? as part of my essence, even though it isn't. And so I guess for me, like that two pronged process, it's not whether or not I think thought forms are real or not. I'm like, obviously they are, they impact me every day <laughs> and like probably impact all of us every day. Um, but I also really appreciate Lexi speaking to like removing them and, and, and then Tiff also speaking to like the reality of them being imposed upon you. Um, that they don't come from you naturally, but they are like kind of projected onto you, um, which is in my eyes, a form of energetic violence, but violence happens every day. So I don't say it to like scare anybody. I think for me, what is kind of alive, most, most alive in this container right now is like reclaiming your power of like re reclaiming your power from the fact or like the possibility that you may have been taking on thought forms unconsciously or identifying with thought forms unconsciously and first of all it being okay and then like when you come to the place that you can accept that maybe doing some work to like you know disenmesh from some of the thought forms you know like i'm me i'm not this sweater but this sweater was an idea that i had to put on because it's so cozy but also like if it burned up in a fire, I would not stop being me, right? Same with these cards. Like these cards are tools and they're so fabulous, but they're not me. They're symbols that I work with. And also if like, let's just say a huge gust of wind took all these cards out of my car right now, I wouldn't stop being me. And I also wouldn't stop this reading. I'll tell you that for sure. Okay. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, it's like sometimes um, for me, I like, will juggle the thought forms around in my brain until they get to the place where they're so absurd that all they can do is just dis like detangle from my crown, you know, or like go back into like my solar plexus so I can like have my life force as opposed to like always using my life force to think, 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 think different possibilities. Does that make sense, y'all? I also might be channeling Kali right now. But I also do feel like there's something about graceful destruction aligned or like connected to these um these two cards. 
feels amazing to reclaim lost awareness as Nobu expressed in the annoyance thread. Ooh, thank you for bringing us to that, Lexi. Thank you for saying that. Wow. Wow. It does. It actually really, really does. And you don't realize how much peace you're like exchanging for that thought form to like take up space in your own vessel. Like it's like you're like paying that thought form or that egregore in, in my opinion. This is just my opinion. Like you're paying it from your your reserve of peace so that it can have a little like time, like rent free time in your head. And I mean, there's things that we reflect on. It's part of the human experience. But I think that there is a particular particular type of thought form that we're acknowledging. And it's specifically the thought forms that stop us from acting effortlessly and towards like um, things that we really enjoy or things that actually bring us life. Um, Ahmed says, that's interesting. So you're saying implants always come from the crown and make its way elsewhere. Please correct me if I got that wrong. Thanks for ask asking that question, Ahmed. Um, I'd say I'd say like yes, because the like the place in where the place that we process a lot of our thinking happens in the brain. Um part of me almost wants to say that like thought forms can attach to other places. Um so yes and no. And then I would also say that the example that I gave earlier was like an example of like what I do to transmute like the leftover energy of wanton thought forms. And I think actually I saw like, I'm not, I don't want to dox you, Lexi, but like on threads, you were speaking to like how you like recycle like crown energy to your solar plexus. And to me, that feels really, really wise. So I may have also just been like bringing that example into the container because I feel like honestly, like maybe we can like do a process to one day where we like see what the thought forms feel like, see what happens when we disengage from the charge and then watch where energy returns back. Because sometimes for me, it's a little different. It's like I'll release a thought form and then I'll feel like a tingle in my root. And then, like, I'll release a thought form and then my heart will, like, get washed over by this energy. Um, and same with any other chakra point, other parts of, of the body. I, I do think that it's, like, a somatic experience that you can track. But I do think it would be hard to, like, get down on paper. Like, where does the energy go when it's, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if there's one set place that it travels to. Um, Anna says, I also feel like it's natural that it returns energy to different chakras yes absolutely and sometimes like the energy just dissipates too which i won't get into today but that does give me some ideas on a field tuning container so watch out watch out y'all okay so now that we're done beating these thought forms to the dirt <laughs> i wanted to um bring up the other two cards that came up in this container so we have the daughter of wands which i think speaks to this pleasure principle that i was like feeling into like how sometimes like releasing energy engaging in energy work brushing up your field having a practice i'll just say actually feels good yes and anna says talk about <laughs> talk about returning energy to different chakras <laughs> and I'm going to read what the Daughter of Wands says, just so we can have a by the book framework and then build out from that framework. The Daughter of Wands. Ashe, Lexi. So, Wands represents fire, south, the life force, creative spark, and passion. Hello. The Daughter of Wands represents the combination of earth and fire, rushing off to new things with the wisdom of the past. So honestly, guys, it feels like spirits being like, y'all done, oh, thank you for this gift tip. Um, y'all done crystallized some wisdom. There are some books that you have closed. There are some thresholds that you have passed. There are some 
entanglements that you have disentangled yourself from. And if you haven't yet, take a moment to pat yourself on the back because I will. Good job. And it doesn't feel like just us. It does feel like collectively. So if you're not even going to pat yourself on the back, just do it for the collective. Do it for the collective. I just saw what card was at the bottom of the deck. I'm not going to ruin it. I'm not. <laughs> but to get back to the daughter of swords, um, I mean, the daughter of wands, um, this card, yeah, is straight up about passion. I feel like to kind of connect it to the other cards, I think it has to do with the fact that we are maybe holding on to the past in ways that we're imagining that the breadth of our idealism can only be as good as things were in the past but spirits saying right now dream bigger because it gets better and that might sound trite and that might not apply to every single context but for those that it does apply to i do want to reiterate it that when you're releasing these thought forms there's a very clear distinction right now. Spirit's like, it's not, you're not going to be holding space when you release this. You're not going to be um, hoping and wishing and praying. This, this, like, this release is like preceding something that has your name written all over, all over it. Is that how I want to say that? Yes. It's like, the Daughter of Wands also represents passion, also represents pleasure, but I don't know why. This might not be for everybody, but there feels like there's this, like, like prize. Like, mm, how do I want to say this? Maybe I'll open up the floor to y'all. What do you guys get in conjunction with the other two cards? The Tower? and the Ten of Swords, when you juxtapose that, for some reason, that's how Spirit wants to, us to look at it. When you juxtapose the Daughter of Wands with those two cards, along with maybe what I've already said, what do you guys um, kind of get from it? Anna says, feels like a fresh start to me. Mm -hmm. Fresh start, crystallized wisdom. The path you paved is ready to be walked on. I just keep hearing these. Clear audience is my thing. So I'm like hearing like spirit being like, yeah, it's like new beginnings. Like all these things that are just coming to me about this yeah that definitely aligns guys oh the second card let me pull that back up for clarifier this is the first card the ten of swords i hope you can see that adam and then we had the tower card is that my hair whoops followed by the Daughter of Wands, and then the Nine of Swords, which we haven't quite gotten to yet. Ahmed says, felt complimentary to me again. It's like you're finally turning around so that you're flowing with the currents rather than against it. Ashe. Of course. Yeah. And there's something about this too that's like, you pave the path. You, you co-create the new beginning that you desire. You leap, spirit destroys, and then the new path opens up in front of you. And I don't want to say that as if there isn't like agency to this and that this isn't like a co-creation. And I think that's why I was kind of like, celebrate yourself, like big up yourself. Cause like somebody in here did it. Somebody listening to this did it. Adam says, I can't help but feel the, the connection to other field tunings with this soulful passion over mind message. Mm -hmm. 
that is like an ethos for me, Adam. So thank you for pointing to that. <laughs> I'm like, one thing about me in a reading, I'm gonna tell you what needs to go away, what needs to like be brushed under the rug or completely composted and what you need to be doing now. <laughs> So I appreciate that. Yes. Ahmed said it makes sense to get repeated readings when it's the same participants in here. Ashe. And I love continuity. Me personally. I'm like, I would hate it if things were like sporadic and didn't have like a place to land with the audience. So thank you guys for reflecting. This actually means a lot to me. Because sometimes I'd be feeling so random when I open my channel. And I'm like, oh no, that's actually like connected to the last time I opened my channel, which connects to the last time I opened my channel. So it's pretty cool. So this is kind of lit. I did want to ask for clarify a card, but I'm not going to because I'll share y'all share with y'all uh, what's at the bottom of the deck. But I'm going to read the Nine of Swords now. So the swords represent air, east, mental realms, realities that the mind creates. And the Nine of Swords represents fears, anxiety. When it's reversed, it means confronting each fear so that it becomes an ally. Interesting. Um, Tiff says, oh, that compost might be all the stuff one might throw out of the tower. Oh, and the wand girl might be the garden we planting. Hello. Hello. Spirit, do you hear that? We're calling it in. Yeah, man. No, and I really enjoy that because I think that there is. The cards are telling a story. And the cards like we did ask for breadcrumbs. So I'm really happy that we're like seeing that because it does it feels like spirits like throw it out while you can i'm gonna figure it out and i need you to move forward but it feels like there again just there's this presence that's like guiding us in an intuitive way and if you feel inclined i would suggest you trust it because being led to greener pastures can only be a possibility if you take that first step and i know it's, it's so much easier said than done it's so much easier said than done. And I feel like that's what this Nine of Swords is speaking to. And it's like, okay, I took the steps. I blocked their number. And I started working out. And I'm going to bed early. And I'm on my shit. Now what? And like, while you're holding the space, there might be some... Th listen, this sounds very particular. While you're holding the space, there might be these fears and anxieties of how things have turned out in the past that are like, kind of like springing forward is what i hear but i feel like that's what that's what this these cards are like pointing to not only does it feel good when you can like be loyal to yourself in advance not only does it feel sweet when you can get ahead of like some plans that spirit might have for you and feel and realize like you were hustling forward it also is fire when you can like temper yourself and feel into your fear and feel into your anxiety until there's nothing else to be felt. Because I'm like, I feel like there's this like, oh, the fear means this, so I'm not gonna, or the fear means this, that means I have to push through it anyway. But it's like, it could literally be valid. Like your body could be like, remember last time you did that? It turned out like this and you got your feelings hurt and you skinned your knees, so don't do that. And it can be valid. It probably is valid. But also... Hmm, this is deep. Are we going to go there? But also, what's more valid? <laughs> I also feel like spirits like, what is more valid than stepping out on faith? What is more valid when you can teach your body how to hold space for your own self? You know, then it, what is fear and anxiety but like a passing breeze and a reality that your body is so used to that it doesn't actually stop you? You know, and I also feel like there's this other part of this message that spirit wants to point to that, like, if you know what fear and anxiety feels like, and you're so used to kind of 
how those sensations might occur in the sense that like you know them intimately not to say that like oh they're too much you know it's like you might know them so intimately that it might be your body asking you and spirit asking you to teach yourself to feel something new or at least hold space for yourself long enough so that you can feel something new and that's a challenge But I feel like that's also why practice was being brought up earlier. And how like cultivating your like energetic container, even if you're not inviting other people into it, it's still your container. You still have to live in it. And so the spirit is dragging me too, Tiff. Like understand, understand. But I feel like it's like spirit is really saying that. Like if you're, if you're, holding the container for your hopes and your dreams you can also there's also room in that container for the you in between those hopes and dreams coming into manifestation and i'm getting like all these images of like being with yourself and holding space for yourself on the most mundane days being there holding space for yourself on the days where things are like so dead and so flat like you don't have energy to give anyone you do for yourself I know that's right. Let me read the chat. <laughs> I feel like I just kind of went off for a little bit. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see. Thanks for resonating, guys. We got some, we got some emojis in the chat. Adam says, especially in the space time, anxiety is like thirty percent of the air that we breathe. Oh my god, it's a lifestyle. Honestly, for a lot of people, it's like, like. It's their identity. It's one of the thought forms that they attach to, attach to. Like, I feel this anxiety, therefore I am anxious. It's like, hold up. But are you? <laughs> like, I feel all over the place. I'm bipolar. But wait, hold on. Well, how did we get there? <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it does. It feels like, again, this ten of swords, this, like, m- these mental extremes are kind of being asked to be tempered and harmonized by taking five minutes to walk outside, taking 10 minutes to breathe. If you're in the middle of a conversation, asking for some space. If you're in the middle of like a high pressure decision, being like, I can't make this decision today. If you are even at the threshold of something really exciting, you know, and you feel a little anxious, go into that. Uh, this is like, this reading also feels about like, feels akin to the feeling of doing things just to create space in your field specifically around like new experiences but I also hear that like novel experiences when you're kind of like when you can like tune your awareness into it and kind of move beyond the thoughts I feel like spirit is showing me things like making toast making a cup of coffee taking a shower um, mowing your lawn like these things being imbued not with like like asking spirit to imbue these mundane moments, but like you taking the initiative to imbue these moments with life. Therefore, they're they're not mundane anymore. And it also kind of like trains our awareness in a way where it I keep getting, I keep seeing this image of like something being sculpted and molded. And I feel like that's what spirit is like showing, showing us right now that like things will fall, you will prosper. You will have high days and you will have low days. But if your awareness, you can kind of befriend your own awareness and different parts of, of your senses, then you can have this like deeply pleasurable, immersive experience with life just because you said so, is what I keep hearing. Anna says, I keep thinking about the experience of a rock cl- of rock climbing because I did it a couple weeks ago for the first time. You hit your threshold of fear, you feel it, and then blast to the next threshold, that part. Yep. That was my day today. I almost didn't do field tuning. And now I'm like, bah, bah, this reading is so fire. <laughs> so I feel that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man it's Liddy. so okay it's interesting because i want to like situate it in some context too right like 
there's the portal of the solstice coming up. Now, this is the part of me where I'm like divining and like offering things. So take it. If you fuck with it, if you don't, you can leave it. It's fine. But I feel like spirit is kind of showing me how you can kind of do something like a visualization or some sort of like um, imaginative process where you can you can just decide within yourself what parts of yourself are you taking into the threshold of the solstice like what parts of you are coming along who's like who's getting told goodbye not really goodbye but like integrated um and especially especially like what thought forms like kind of doing some sort of meditative um imaginative uh ritual and right now what i'm seeing is like if you could imagine like around your crown, there are like different bubbles and you could kind of like imagine that the different thought forms that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis are in these bubbles. And then you just watch these bubbles and you and your, in your sort of awareness in your meditative state can decide which bubble am I going to take with me into the, into the new year, into the solstice, into the hibernation season. And I would also that's what's coming to me right now. It feels deeply ancestral because this also is the part of time of the year our ancestors would like gather food, berries, bring them in for the, you know, like it's going to be cold outside. There's not that much hunting or whatever. Uh, you're, you can't do that as readily as you could. So it feels like spirits like take a note from your ancestors and instead of like externalizing this all into the material like what do i need to have to survive <laughs> gather your nuts exactly <laughs> julie exactly like instead of wondering about what sort of material you need to get through the season what kind of spiritual sanctification do you need to go into this season i love how my glasses just came off and i'm like i can see <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> but <laughs> that's when i'm getting real um so yeah, just as a little tippy tip, y'all might want to engage in some of that practice. And if that went really fast for you guys, feel free to like rewind to that part in particular. Yes, definitely. Where I'm like, hold on one motherfucking second. <laughs> so, um, ooh, okay, I'm kind of excited to share the card that's at the bottom of the deck. But before I do... I would like to hold space for any reflections or pieces of what I maybe shared that um, that you guys may be reflecting on or, or sitting with. No pressure. You all want to see this card at the bottom of the deck, huh? Oh, thanks, Adam. I appreciate that. Yeah, it feels right on time for me, too. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. I feel like I was going to pull an oracle card, but I might not even because these cards just felt so, so full. You know what I mean? <laughs> <clears throat> Julie says the thought forms tied into ancestral stuff really hit for me. Yeah, man. Thanks for saying. Me too. I was meditating on that last night during some body work. Ooh, I love that sink. And I hope the meditation was fruitful.
Feels like something I've been working on is ready to be put into motion. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's the vibe, Tiff. Yeah, man. Yeah, like even when I was saying about practice, like you saying that puts it into a whole new context for me. Because like just because you accomplish something doesn't mean that you stop practicing. And also you wouldn't go into something without having that practice. So that's why I'm like, it feels like this message is like kind of like topsy-turvy. I won't say all over the place because it's like a spectrum. It's like for some of us who may be on one end of the spectrum, for some of us who might be on another end, some of us who might be in the middle of that. And it's like this spectrum is about about that, like practice and how like practice can help you realize you're at a place like spiritual practice, right? Help you realize you're at a place where you need more time or it can help you realize you're ready to go or somewhere in between. So thank you for speaking to that. Yeah, thanks for affirming, guys. Okay, so I'm going to share the last card now. Or the card that was at the bottom of the deck. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so it's the lovers. The lovers card. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna try something. Hold on. I was going to try to put on the soundboard and put an applause sound. I don't know if I can do it, though. That's okay. <laughs> Round of applause for the lover's card. So the card that was at the bottom of the deck anchoring the energy. Shout out to Adam's Archetypical Hour. Because that is definitely what we del delineated on last night. So this is fire. I think that's why I'm kind of like cheesed up about it. I'm like, we are just talking about this. We are just talking about it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, isn't that fine? How do you do? <laughs> I'm going to read the lover's card, y'all. Because it's speaking. Is speaking. I know a lot of readers be like, this isn't about romantic love. So like, get your fucking mind out the gutter. <laughs> and I'm like, this could be about romantic love. So get your mind back in the fucking gutter. <laughs> so I'm going to read the lovers on that note. The lovers rush together, symbolizing the play of polar opposites and the urge to merge in loving, harmonious union. If the lovers can get beyond traditional sex roles, stereotypes, and culturally ingrained fantasies, the romantic union may help them experience their own higher selves. Hmm. <laughs> I'm right there with you, Tiff. <laughs> I mean, it just got like cold in Louisiana too, so it like I feel like the cuddle season is just actually now hitting me. Um, so yes, I'm right in the gutter with you, Tiff. Um, so yes, just to kind of keep the efficacy of this reading, it does feel like spirit is speaking to love. Um, speaking to the harmonious sensation that we call love, not to disintegrate what love is or the pedestal that other people might have love on. But it also ties into, I think, the reading that kind of felt a little topsy-turvy. Now I feel is more anchored. Um, there's so many things I want to say, but I'm like, yo, if you're not in the room, then there's no way you could have tapped into Adam's our typical hour hopefully it'll get on the podcast but yesterday was like such a strong delineation of this archetype the lover's archetype in the tarot that my whole perspective on it actually is refreshed so like there is a part of me that does want to speak to romantic union because that is part of the human experience and i feel like if that's in our purview and if it's on our path 
then I pray that y'all get it. Like, not only just get it, but I hope that it's harmonious. I hope that it can transcend. What did it say, the lover's card? I hope that we can tra- um, love beyond traditional sex role stereotypes and culturally ingrained fantasies. <laughs> um, but yeah, I also feel like uh, I want to bring it into the container because um, that felt sense of being in union with another person is insurmountable only, only by the union you have within yourself. And so, yes, if you're looking for a way to kind of really banish thought forms and the way that they can be destructive, not that they always are, but the way that they can be destructive to your life and your overall trajectory, it feels like the lover's card is speaking to how internal harmony is like a bug repellent. And spiritual harmony, right? Like this is what I'm talking about, like spiritual energies. Being in harmony is like a bug repellent towards degenerative thought forms or when it comes to degenerative thought forms, attaching to our experience and trying to play out in our experience. So how do you, how do you harmonize yourself? Oh my God, that sounds like such a beautiful proposition. I wish I could do it. Brings you right back to what we were talking about earlier. Practice. If you get a nudge from spirit, follow it. If you get the urge to sit down and meditate in a particular way, do it. If you have the urge to dance and move energies in a particular way, do it. If you can, right? If spirit taps you on the shoulder and is like, hey, I want you to have like this drink mixed with this drink. This is how you have like work a really well myelated relationship with spirit. It happens through like just like with any skill, it's like working a muscle. And so these all sound like, take a leap of faith, be ready when the tower falls. Um, what was the other card? Live out your passions. Don't get stuck up in thought forms. These are all like also thought forms. So I pray that like the spirit behind these, these um, suggestions and the lovers too, right? Harmonize yourself. These are all like ideations and concepts until you do them then you'll be like oh that's what it feels like oh that's what it feels like to be in union and so like I feel like that's kind of like the crux the crux of this it's like a lot of the times people engage in spiritual practice to have a specific material outcome but what if you didn't what if you had a spiritual practice because you were worth it not to sound like a makeup commercial but I'm like but what if you know (laughs) What if you cultivated your spirit, you cultivated yourself, you cultivated your relationship to your thoughts, to your mind, to your body, to your spirit from a place of loving yourself? Like, what if that was the baseline? You know? So. Mm, thank you for saying that, Adam. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I'm so used to that. I'm so used to that projection and that thought form. And again, I I think a lot of these projections that we were speaking to at the beginning of the container are exactly what the lover's card pointed us to. These culturally ingrained fantasies, like first the boy comes to pick the girl up and the girl is so demure and sweet. It's like, that's not life, yo. That is your favorite sitcom. And if you want that, go watch it. But you can't live that out. You know? <laughs> so this is also for people who are in relationships. Harmonize yourself. I'm not saying ignore your lover because they're in it with you. But maybe the two of you, if you are in a union or if you're in any type of relationship with another person, maybe the two of you can partner and work with each other to peel away and like say to one another, here, give me your culturally ingrained fantasies and let me help you plant that shit in the dirt because that's not who the fuck I am. And the ones that I have of you, let me go ahead and take that out too because I see that's not who the fuck you are. And I say that a lot, you guys. I'm, I'm gonna give you a personal tip, a personal head tip. That's what I say to every person that I date, everyone who I get close with. 
I'm like, oh, I remind you of this person. I'm not them. Oh, I'm like that person. I'm not them. I'm me. You know? And sometimes, like, I don't know. It feels like this reading is getting into that. How, like, there's thought forms that can cloud even our relationships and our connections with one another. It's not a bad thing. But I think it's it's okay if, like, the the veil, like, between you and another person falls. It's okay if you leap into the connection first and figure out the rest later. I'm not saying be impulsive. But what I'm saying is it's worth it to take a step out of the culturally ingrained thought forms or the thought forms we even prescribe to ourselves. It's okay to take them off, is what I want to say. You feel me? <laughs> Thank you, spirit. Thank you. <laughs> all right i'm gonna sign off craig but i'm down to like hang out for 10 more minutes thanks everyone who listened to this asynchronously love y'all appreciate y'all and see you next week peace